Let's talk about the markets in three minutes. Uh, you've given us a nice sum of some of the China themes coming through. We'll look, look for those around EMFX and what we're seeing in bond markets. The big uh, set piece events, though, of the week are going to be around central banking. What are your reflections ahead of the Fed, the ECB, the BOJ and the PBOC? So I think the Fed will go for that hawkish skip. That's what I said a few weeks ago. I will say my conviction is kind of lowered, and I really do think it hinges on that CPI print tomorrow. But there's a lot of data recently that suggests that CPI print might be slightly softer than consensus, and I think that'll give the excuse for the hawkish skip from the Fed. Uh, I say that, so that's what I'm going for, but I, it is lower conviction than I had before. Maybe they will indeed hike this week. I think what's really important if they do pause, the hawkishness will not come from explicit guidance that they're going to be hiking so many times extra. It'll just come from economic forecasts, which show that the Fed is not expecting a collapsing economy and therefore might justify more hikes through its inflation forecast and its unemployment forecast. And we might get some sense of that in the dot plot. So that's what I expect from the Fed. I think that'll tee up the other meetings. ECB, a hike is a, is a lock. It is a bit more about the guidance about the future and how that'll kind of clash uh, in contrast to the Fed just before. BOJ, I I'm not expected to move this week. PBOC is another one where my views are slightly changing. I was less optimistic than others that they would deliver some kind of cut or some support for MLF this week. I now have lower conviction and maybe they will provide some support to the market in context that they do want equities to go higher. Yeah, I know Bloomberg Economics have been talking about expecting a cut in rates from the PBOC on Thursday. We'll see whether that comes. Uh, talking about commodities then, Mark, on the oil price, the oil price down 13% year to date. And to, to make the point that you made earlier, it does raise questions about what kind of floor, if any, has been put under oil prices by those recent Saudi moves. And then we add on top of that Goldman Sachs cutting their price target for oil for the third time in just six months. This does seem to just be dropping. Yeah, look, and it goes back to this really important story for commodities that is often forgotten, even by those who are in commodities markets, is that in the short term, commodities markets tend to be all supply. But longer term, they're really just a demand liquidity story. And this very negative price action, particularly in oil that we're seeing in other commodities today, is a story of declining demand and, of course, um, higher real yields, which squeeze that liquidity story. I am noticing many more people turn more bearish in oil, uh, and, and I have been kind of biased that way all year. The one thing that's slightly making me nervous is I am not as negative on global economies as many people are out there. That's partially justifying my higher yields view, though, which is the other side of this. But I think oil is going to become a big measure for the next couple of months.